What up, calculus students? So, um, turns out finding the equation whose y coordinates give us slopes of our original function is very easy to do. Okay, there's rules that we need to follow. The first rule we're learning is the power rule. It deals with x to power functions. All of these are x to powers. And the rule is if you have x to the nth power and you want to find its like tangent slope equation, generating equation, or what we say is we take the derivative of this, we find that all you need to do is take this power, bring it down, but then subtract one from the original power. It's kind of why x cubed minus twos, which was the first function we looked at last class and we kind of examined at two, its slope was 12. X cubed minus two, its derivative is three X squared minus zero. Um, so we just need to practice that. We need to practice bringing down the power, subtracting one from the power. There's X to the fourths tangent slope generator. X cubed tangent slope generator, three X squared. X squareds, two X to the first. You don't have to write that one there. X to the first, it's easy to do. It's like one X to the zero. X to the zero is just one or the derivative of X is just one. Now the derivative of one is zero. It's kind of like you can write one X to the zero there and bring down the zero. Or we can start thinking about this more um, conceptually. Whereas like if you have an equation Y equals one, what are the slopes of y equals one? The slopes are all zero. What are the slopes of y equals x? Y equals x's slopes are all one. So like, that's why we say the derivative of x is one, the derivative of one is zero. Now, power rule doesn't work in a denominator. So we are forced to rewrite any powers in a denominator as powers in a numerator using the negative exponent rule. So one over X, which is one over X to the first can be written as X to the negative first, one over X squared, X to the negative second. And then we use the power rule. We bring down the power, we subtract one. Well, negative one minus one is negative two. Bring down the power, subtract one, I get negative three. Bring down the power, subtract one, I'll get negative four. And then all I would expect you to be uh, ready to do is to take those negative powers and rewrite them as positive powers, which is to use the negative exponent rule and to write it in a denominator as a positive power. Now, what do we have here? This is the tangent slope. I call it the generating equation for F. If you plug in X's, the Y's that you get are slopes of F. Okay. Now let's immediately do something because er, uh, later on it says like find F prime of one. F prime of one would be me plugging in one into F prime. Four plus three plus two plus one minus one, minus two, minus three. It just so happens like the ones cancel, the twos cancel, the threes cancel, you just get four. What does this mean? Well, this is a Y coordinate on F prime. This is telling us that the slope of F when X is one is four. Now I don't know the Y coordinate here. I could find it, but, uh, we don't really care so much about where what the y coordinate is. We just know what the slope is whenever we plug in x. The slope of f at x equals one is four. Okay. Now we could find the y coordinate, and this is what we'll have to do to find the equation of a tangent line. F of one is one plus one plus one plus one plus one 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 one. So one two three four five six seven eight. Okay, so the slope at the point one eight is four. 
we can combine this point and this slope to write an equation if we wanted to. It's not asked for you to do, but this is just all the things that you know, we need to be prepared to do and more. Y minus eight equals four X minus one. All right, same deal here. Now I'm gonna write Y's derivative as Y prime. It's just like its tangent slope generator. If you have a constant in front of things, when you bring down the power, you'll just multiply that four and that three, giving you 12 X squared. This would be, bring down the two, six X to the first. Bring down the one, or like the slope of Y equals two X is just two. The slope of y equals five is zero. The derivative of five is zero. If we ever have a fractional power, we need to write it as a fractional power. Like this is a cubed root. I would wanna write it as a fractional power and then use the power rule. Now this is a little tricky. You bring down the one third, great. But then when you subtract one, make sure you're subtracting it correctly. Subtracting one is like subtracting three thirds, giving me negative two thirds. I'm going to rewrite these two things as 2x to the negative first. So it's got a minus sign in front of it. So I'm going to subtract negative 2x to the negative second. Bring down the negative 1, subtract 1. This one is 3x to the negative second. I will be subtracting 3 times negative 2 is negative 6, x to the negative third. You can change those to plus the positives. It's like that negative and that negative will cancel. And then again, I would want you to rewrite. This X would go in the denominator. It would go with the three. You don't have to put a one third divided by. It's the same thing, but this looks better. Just goes in the denominator with a positive power. Two stays up. This is important. The two stays up. The two is not uh, being taken to the negative second power. A lot of people try to move the two down don't move the two down, keep the two up, just move the negative exponent. Keep the six up, move the negative exponent. And again, they're asking you what's y prime, well, I already found f prime of one, f prime of one was uh, four. This is the slope of the tangent to f at x equals one. Y prime of one, this is, you know, the graph of the tangent slopes of F. Plugging in one gives me a Y coordinate on Y prime. A Y coordinate on F prime gives me the tangent slope on Y at whatever point we get when we plug in one. So let's figure this out. It's nice when I plug in one. 12 plus six plus two plus a third plus two plus six. It's not that great, but. Let's just write it out, 12 plus six plus two plus a third plus two plus six. So 18, 19, 20, 22, 28, 28 plus a third. We don't like to write mixed numbers, 28 and a third. So I'm gonna multiply 28 uh, by three to get it a common denominator. Six, seven, 84 thirds. So this is 84 thirds plus a third which is 85 thirds. Okay, so 85 thirds, that is the tangent slope to y at x equals one. If we wanted to find out like the actual point where we found the tangent slope, we need the y coordinate on this graph. We'd plug in one, four plus three plus two plus five plus one minus two minus three, because like plugging in one Cubed root of one is just one, two divided by one, three divided by one. So the threes are gone, the twos are gone. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So at the point one ten, the tangent slope is eighty-five thirds. Combine the point and its slope to get an equation of a tangent line. Y minus 10 equals 85 thirds X minus one. Was this asked to you? No, but we're gonna be doing it more and more and more. 
Okay, h prime, now we have fractional powers. If you ever have roots, turn it into a fractional power. If you have a fractional power, you're just using the power rule, bring down the 5 fourths, subtract 1. Subtracting 1 is like subtracting 4 fourths, so I get a 1 fourth. Bring down the 4 thirds, subtract 1, that's subtracting 3 thirds, I get 1 third. Bring down the three halves, subtract one, that's subtracting two halves, you get one half. You're asked to find the tangent slope to h at one, or you're asked to find h prime of one, but then tell me what it represents. The y coordinate on h prime gives me the tangent slope at, uh, of h at x equals one. Fortunately, I'm giving you one for a reason because they're nice and easy to work with. 1 to any power is just 1. All I need to do is 5 fourths plus 4 thirds plus 3 halves. Um, what's going to help me is a uh, common denominator. Common denominator would be 12. So multiply by 3, I get 15 twelfths. Multiply by 4, 16 twelfths. Multiply by 6, 18 twelfths. Uh, 10, 20, 30, no, 20, 40, 60, minus 2, 58, minus 4, 54, minus 5, 49. I think 15 plus 16 plus 18 is 49. Yep. 49 twelfths. Okay, what is this telling me? The tangent slope of h at x equals 1 is 49 twelfths. You get a tangent slope generator. The y coordinates on tangent slope generators are tangent slopes of the original function that it's associated with. You can combine that with a point on h. If I plug in 1, 1, 2, 3, at the point 1, 3 on the graph of h, the tangent slope, which is the derivative, which is the instantaneous rate of change, is 49 twelfths. The equation of the tangent line would be this. Okay. Now, we got to this late in the class. The derivative of cosine is negative sine, whereas the derivative of sine is cosine. So if you have a constant, you just leave it alone. You don't worry about it. A constant, just like how we really didn't worry about the constants here, we left it alone, but then we just happened to have to multiply it by the three to get four times three, okay? It's not that the constant's derivative is zero and this goes away. It's just like it's left alone. So three is left alone and then the derivative of cosine is negative sine. Well, obviously I can like take that negative one and multiply by the three, similar to how I was using the power rule. The derivative of sine is positive cosine. Leave the minus sign, positive cosine. If I have roots, rewrite these as fractional powers. Use the power rule. Bring down the two-fifths, subtract one. I'm subtracting five-fifths. I get negative three-fifths. So the tangent slope generator of G is this equation. Leave the two, move the X down to be with the five. Um, you're asked G prime of pi. This is an example of... Uh, you know, you're going to get messy numbers sometimes, and we're going to just be okay with leaving them. I know the sine of pi is zero, so this is zero. I know the cosine of pi is negative one, so I have minus a negative one. That would be a plus a one. And then over here, it's going to be a messy, messy number, but guess what? It's okay. Just leave it. Okay, so I would say, uh, and I don't, like, what's the point here? It's like, it's not, it's not going to be a nice point. 
uh, I'd have negative three minus zero plus, you know, pi to the two fifths. Why does this to two fifths? I didn't really explain this. This is x squared to the one fifth, a power to a power. You can multiply the powers, which is why we get two fifths. So that's the point. This is the slope. So it's it's weird, but you got to be comfortable with it. At the point pi comma negative three plus pi to the two fifths, the tangent slope is one plus two over five pi to the three fifths. I could write the equation down. It's going to be messy, but like it would be correct. Y minus this equals that times X minus pi. Uh, H prime derivative of sine is positive cosine. Derivative of cosine is negative sine. Derivative of X squared two X. One plus two over five pi to the three fifths. H prime. Maybe I wanted you to actually find H, but probably not. I, I think I wanted you to find the tangent slope. Uh, and I'm asking you for H prime of pi over four. Great. See if we can simplify this as much as possible. Cosine of pi over four is root two over two. Sine of pi over four is also root two over two. Pi over four times two is negative two pi over four, which simplifies to be pi over two. I can combine these root two over twos. This is three root two over twos. This is negative one root twos over twos. So this would be two root twos over two, which is just root two. So I would say this simplified would be root two minus pi over two. Okay, so I'm not even going to find the y coordinate here. I'm not going to worry about writing the equation of the tangent line as, as long as we understand like there is a y coordinate on h, and at that x comma y coordinate, the slope is root two minus pi over two. Uh, at x equals pi over four, the tangent slope is root two minus pi over two. Okay, but you know, we can do so much more if we just have the equation of f prime. We'll see, like we can write equations of tangent lines to original graphs. It's very easy. You gotta understand like which y coordinate means what. Sometimes it's helpful to visualize it. X squared plus two x minus three. I don't really know what it looks like, but it's some parabola, right? Some parabola. Its tangent slope generator, its y prime is two x plus two, the derivative of three is zero, okay? Now, we're gonna plug in one into both y and y prime. If I plug it into y prime, I get four. If I plug it into y, I get one plus two minus three, which is zero. So, what do these separate y coordinates mean? Very, very important. The y coordinate one zero is the point on the graph of y. The y coordinate of y prime four is the slope right here at this point. The slope is four. The point is one zero. So at the point one zero on the graph of y, the slope is four. You combine those two things into the equation of a line. This is the point slope form of a line. All we need to do is plug it in correctly and leave it. Okay, this is good. You don't have to solve for y, you don't have to distribute the four. If anything, if you want a graph to check, you would just like add this number over so that you can easily plug it into your calculator. But this is where if you do have a calculator and you wanna confirm that what you're doing is correct, you can 
graph your equation and your tangent line equation. And you should see the beautiful equation with the point one zero and equation of the tangent line. I'm going to try to pause right here. Okay, so there you go. We got it. Cosines graph. What is its equation of the tangent line at pi over 3? Okay, well, like, again, we need two y coordinates. We need the y coordinate on f, and we need the y coordinate of its derivative. Okay? Now the derivative of cosine negative sine. So let's find these two y coordinates. The y coordinate on f is the point on f. The cosine of pi over three is one half. You gotta be able to do that. Sine of pi over three, the y coordinate on f prime. Sine of pi over three is uh, root three over two. So this would be negative root three over two. Okay, so graph of cosine at like pi over three, tangent line, that slope, negative root three over two, the point, pi over three comma half. Put that together in your equation of a line, y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. I can graph this, this will be the last one that I graph because we have more problems to do that are a little bit more complicated. We're graphing cosine because it's the graph of the function. We don't graph f prime. We could see what it would look like. Like we could see that the tangent slopes of f would give us the graph of f prime, but we don't graph f prime. f prime's y coordinates are used to find tangent slopes. And watch how I can easily graph this line by just plugging in the right side then adding this number one half. Okay, here's the graph of cosine. Pi over three is close to one, so it's right around here. There's that equation of that tangent line. All right. Need two y coordinates, a y coordinate of this and a y coordinate of its tangent slope. Before I do that, I got to Find y prime correctly using the uh, uh, the, using the negative power rule. I bring down the power, subtract one. This will not be a nice number. Okay, let's find two y coordinates. The y coordinate on y prime. 4 times negative 9 is negative 36. 2 cubed is 8. This is negative 2 cubed, which is negative 8, which means this is a positive a half. 36 is 72 halves. Plus a half is 71 halves, negative 71 halves. That's the y-coordinate of y prime. It's the tangent slope of y. Y's point y, like the, the y-coordinate of this function, uh, negative 8 times negative 3 is positive 24. Negative 2 squared is positive 4. 2 divided by 4 is a half. This is 48 halves plus a half, which is 49 halves. Combine that. The point on the graph has this slope. The point on the graph, this point is negative 2 comma 49 halves. So y minus y1 has this slope, negative 71 halves. x minus negative 2. Obviously, when you subtract a negative, it turns into add a positive. Okay, let's do another one. Um, again, if you have a exponent in the denominator, you got to move it up. Find its tangent slope generator, 3. 
I bring down the negative one, it becomes negative three, but that negative and that negative will cancel to make it a positive three. And this will turn into X to the negative second. So I get three plus three over X squared. Now, when I plug in three, there's nothing to plug in here. So three stays, right? I can plug it in here. It's nine. That's uh, one third. Uh, nine thirds plus one third or 10 thirds. Okay, so the y coordinate on the derivative, the y coordinate on the tangent slope generator gives me the tangent slope of this at this x coordinate or at this point. I'll probably graph this one because it's easy to type in. Find the y coordinate on this equation. You do plug in 3 here to get 9 minus 3 over 3, which is 1, so this is 8. So at the point 3, 8, the tangent slope is 10 thirds. Y minus 8 equals 10 thirds X minus 3. Let's graph that really quickly. 3X minus 3 over X. D don't graph Y prime. <coughs> y prime would show you what the tangent slopes everywhere of this would look like. I don't really care about that. What, I'm, what I'd care about now is to use uh, y prime to get the tangent slopes, the y coordinates on the graph of the tangent slopes give you the tangent slopes through the original equation. So all I'm going to use is plugging in numbers to get the y coordinates to know slopes of this. Uh, so 10 thirds x minus 3 plus 8. There is 3x and here is my tangent equation at, I guess, x equals 3. Okay, looking good. Now, what's great about a tangent slope generator is we can see by setting up an equation, when does a tangent slope generator generate certain slopes? So here's a question. Find the x coordinates of the location of x cubed x cubed looks like that looks like this where the tangent slope equals 12 so it's like oh like we we already found kind of last class that we had a tangent slope of 12 you know at this location and here it looks like we could have a similar tangent slope of 12 <coughs> we can use the fact that we get an equation of tangent slopes to our advantage, what is this? Is a tangent slope generator. Plug in X's, get tangent slopes. The Y's of this are the tangent slopes to F. Well, I'm trying to figure out when do we have tangent slopes of 12? Well, the question is, when does the tangent slope generator generate a slope of 12. Now you could obviously kind of guess and check and get your answers, but watch when does your tangent slope generator generate a slope of 12? We have an equation that we can solve. Divide by three, square root, make sure we understand we have a plus or minus because the original value could have been positive or negative. And you get at X equals negative two and two. Now we actually found this. This is our first derivative that we found, the, the slope of x cubed minus two, which will be the same as the slope of x cubed <coughs> at x equals two. At x equals two, wherever this point is, tangent slope's 12. At negative two, wherever this point is, tangent slope's 12. So like, that's awesome. Having an equation that generates tangent slopes means you could, you could set that equation equal to a specific number <coughs> to see when does our tangent slope generator generate certain slopes. <coughs> this is the same thing. We got this uh, parabola. And we're saying, like, when is this parabola increasing at a rate of 16 y's per x? Well, this is an instantaneous rate of change, right? And people might freak out when they're like that. But instantaneous rate of change is the same as tangent slope, is the same as derivative. 
So if I have a tangent slope generator, which I found by using just my rules, easily found, I'm going to see when does my tangent slope generator generate a slope of 16. Well, when will 2x minus 6 give us a y coordinate that's 16? Boom, I have an equation. I can solve set equation. Add 6, 22, divide by 2, 11. Turns out I got to get all the way over here to 11. And the slope at this point, that slope's going to be 16. Okay. When do we have a horizontal tangent? This is a great, great application of having a tangent slope generator. Let's think about what we have for G, some parabola somewhere. Now, what is a horizontal tangent? You gotta know this. A horizontal tangent has a slope of zero. Well, we can see that like at a vertex, the slope would be zero. It's right when it flattens out. We can use calculus to find locations of vertexes. In your past math classes, you use like formulas. You kind of use like the quadratic formula. But watch how by using the tangent slope generator, which is 2x minus 9, I can see when will the tangent slope generator generate a slope of 0. Add 9 divided by 2, you get 9 halves. So at four and a half, watch. X squared minus nine X minus 10. We'll have a vertex at four and a half. I'll move the Y's down so I can see what's going on. Perfect. If I plug in four and a half for X down here, I guess I got to go a little bit further. I will see I have that horizontal tangent or I have my vertex. It's pretty sweet. All right, when does this have a horizontal tangent? Well, this is a cubic function. What do cubic functions look like? They sometimes go up and down and up. So we might have a situation where we have two locations where the slopes are zero. We should be comfortable like being able to visually see that and know, oh, I'm gonna get two answers. All right, so I'm looking for slopes of zero. I'm looking for when my tangent slope generator generates a slope of zero. I'll set up an equation to solve. All right, what's really cool about the way that this is set up is that when I use the power rule, one-third times three just gives me one. So this becomes just x to the second after I subtract one. When I take the two and multiply it by five halves, five halves times two just gives us five. Subtract the one. And then six x is derivative. It's just six. You can have that one up there. Bring the one down. Subtract one x to the zero. So when does my ta tangent slope generator give us y coordinates or generate a tangent slope of zero. How do I solve? Well, it's a quadratic equation. I need to factor to solve. x plus two, x plus three gives me five and six, that's good. So that means actually at negative two and negative three. So actually this graph originally was not correct. What's gonna happen is that we will go like up and down really quickly probably like that at negative three and negative two. And you can graph that and see that, like those are gonna be the locations of the humps. I don't wanna call it the vertexes, but like the humps of uh, this X cubed function. All right, another one, when does this tangent slope equal negative one? Another cubic. So we could kind of see like with cubics, negative one, you know, we might just have one location. We might have two locations, we'll find out. Uh, I think we're going to have two locations, but let's see. We'll just set up. When does my tangent slope generator generate a certain tangent slope? When does this tangent slope generator give me a Y coordinate? That's negative one, that tangent slope. 
Well, quadratics equal to a number, bad. Quadratics equal to zero, good. Add one to both sides, boom. Look to factor. Well, gosh, I want to factor out that three because I want to make life easy on myself. That's nice because now I can factor this easily instead of worrying about like the whole A times C method. Three, this is X plus three, X plus one. I'd see that when X, whatever the points is, when X are negative three and negative one, that equation of that tangent, uh, that, of that cubic, will have tangent slopes that equal negative one. It's awesome. Find the equation of the line tangent to this and parallel to this. Well, it's very similar to what we were just doing. Like, we know that parallel lines have equal slopes. Okay? Well, what's the slope of this line? Well, the only way I can see it is if I kind of turn it into y equals mx plus b. You can take the derivative of this and say like y prime is 6, or you can just say, oh, m is 6. So the slope of this line is 6. So I'm going to figure out when does this equation have a slope of 6? Or when will my tangent slope generator generate a slope of 6? I add 6 to both sides, I get 12, I divide by 2, I get x equals 6. Great. So this equation, x squared minus 6x plus 2, whatever it looks like, when x is 6, has a slope of 6, which is going to be parallel to you know, 6x plus 3. But now I need the equation of this line. What do you need? A point and a slope, right? You'll need the two kind of y-coordinates. You need the y-coordinate of this, so you need this point, and you need the slope. You already know that the slope is six, but I'm just gonna like show you that, uh, show you why it works. So let's find the point. The point comes from the y-coordinate on y. Plugging in six, the x-coordinate of six, you get 36 minus 36 plus two, which is just two. So I got six, two. So this point is 6, 2, and I know the slope is 6. How do I know the slope is 6? Well, I found when the slope is 6, when x is 2. If you want to just double check, look, y prime 2x minus 6, that's the tangent slope generator. When I plug in 6, I get 6. Just so happens that works out. So at the point 6, 2, my slope is 6. y minus 2 equals 6, x minus 6. And... What's great about this one, the visualization is really nice. Graphing x squared minus 6x plus 2. Graphing the first equation, 6x plus 3. And this second equation, which is the tangent slope equation to y. We'll get this nice picture. Ready? Uh, let's zoom standard. So it's 10 by 10. Quadratic. First line. Second line parallel to this line. But this second line is tangent to my first equation. Isn't that cool? Now, like, if you're just watching this video and you're just, like, writing down exactly what I'm putting down, you don't know how to do this problem. Okay? You need to go back and try this problem by yourself. Maybe on another sheet of paper to make sure you understand, like, if I give you this question, do you know how to do all the steps to get what we're looking for? That's what you need to do before your quiz next class. All right, I need to find the equation of the lines. Tangent to this, parallel to this. Okay, well, if it's parallel to this, the slope needs to be 16. Parallel lines equal slopes. I'm going to set up an equation. When will my tangent slope generator generate this specific slope? What will be the x-coordinates on this where I have a slope of 16? I subtract 4. I divide by 3. I get positive and negative 2. Okay, great. Now, that means there's two equations. There's going to be two locations. Some y minus slope of 16, x plus 2, and some y minus y-coordinate, slope of 16, x minus 2. 
Okay, that goes there, that goes there. I know the slope is 16. I just found when y prime produces y's of 16. So the y primes give me tangent slopes of this at two and negative two. I'll get y prime values of 16, which means I'll have tangent slopes of this that equal 16. The last step we need to do is to find the y coordinates at these two points. So on the graph of x cubed plus 4x plus 1, at negative 2, where your slope is 16, at 2, where your slope is 16, what are the y coordinates of these points? Like, you know it's negative 2, comma, what? You know this is 2, comma, what? So all you have to do is plug in negative 2. I get negative 15. So this point is negative 2, negative 15. Obviously, my graph is not correct, but whatever. You know, you could fix the axis. You plug in 2, you get 8 plus 8 plus 1. So 16, 17. So this point is 2, 17. All right, so at negative 2, I'd have y plus 15. At 2, I'd have y minus 17. And if you want to have some fun, graph this line, graph this line, graph this line, graph this function, you would see the function, some random line, and then two lines that are tangent to this function that are parallel to this function. One, two, three, four graphs, three of which are parallel to each other, two of which are tangents. Awesome. At which x location do these graphs have the exact same rate of change or the exact same tangent slope? Well, this is interesting. We've been finding when do tangent slopes produce certain values? Like when do tangent slope generators generate certain values? And we've been trying to, you know, say like, when am I going to get a, a tangent slope that equals six? When will my tangent slope generator generate six? When will my tangent slope generator generate negative one? Well, now I'm going to see when will my tangent slope generators Produce the same value. When will this tangent slope generator generate the same slope as that tangent slope generator? We could set two tangent slope generators equal to each other. How do you solve? Maybe I'll subtract the 2x. Subtract the 6. Divide by 4. I get negative 3 fourths. Okay. Now let's, let's look at this and see if it, if it makes sense. They might not be at the same location. I, I'm not looking at the y coordinates on the graphs. x squared plus 3x. Three 3x three squared plus 6x. All right, two different looking graphs, but they're x squared graphs. What I'm saying is that negative 4 thirds Sorry, negative three fourths. The slope here is the same as the slope here. You could kind of see how it would be. You could see how, like, oh yeah, those tangent slopes, those tangent lines are are parallel to each other. That means they're they're growing at the same rate. That's the instantaneous rate of change. It's pretty cool. Same thing, when will these two cubic graphs have the same tangent slope? Well, when will their tangent slope generators generate the same values? When will the y coordinates on their tangent slope generators and the y coordinates on tangent slope generators are slopes to the original functions, when will those tangent slopes be the same? Um, I'm going to subtract 3x, I get 6x squared. I'm going to divide by 6, I get 2. I'm going to take the square root, I get plus or minus root 2. Uh, this is important, and we've been dealing with like whole numbers a lot, but there's two locations. x cubed plus 12x, 3x cubed.
at root two and negative root two, they're going to have the same tangent slope. I, I, you know, it's like, I look at it and I'm like, really, is it? But I, I trust what I just did. I got to go down. So I'm saying the slope there and the slope there are the exact same. I can kind of see that. Yeah, it's going to be very positive, but that's it. And to be the same on the other side, like it's awesome that if we have a tangent slope generating equation, we could do so much with it. This graph has a tangent line at x equals two that is parallel to line y equals five x plus six. What does a have to be for this case? This is another situation where like, guys, you got to try this by yourself. Don't just watch what I'm doing. Or if you watch what I'm doing and you just copy things down, you have no idea what to do with this problem. All these problems that we just did, if you're just copying things down, you have no idea what to do. You need to do it yourself, okay? You need to be able to think about what is given to you, what can you use, how are we gonna figure this out, okay? So, I mean, pause and do the problem. See what you have and then watch the video. This at two has a tangent slope parallel to this. Parallel lines equal slopes, the slope at five. Slope equals five, not the slope at five. Slope equals five. Okay. That means the tangent slope generator, when I plug in two, better generate a tangent slope of five. That's what you need to be able to get to, this statement, okay? Yourself. Now, a is just a number. So if I took the derivative of ax cubed, I'm going to bring that 3 down and just be like, it's 3a x squared. And then the derivative of 5x, 5. Okay. This is my tangent slope generator. I'm not setting it equal to 5 yet because I'm told that this tangent slope generator, when I plug in two, better equal five. Well, if I plug in two, this becomes four. Three times four is 12. 12a 12 minus five, that has to equal five. I then add five, I get 10. I divide by 12, I get five, six after simplifying. So here we go. I'm saying the equation g of x, which is 5, 6, x cubed minus 5x, at x equals 2, will have a tangent slope that's 5. You can even check. You can, like, take the derivative. Does this work out? The derivative would be 5 halves x squared minus 5. This derivative at 2 is 5 halves times 4 minus 5. 10 minus 5, 5. This equation at x equals 2 has a tangent slope that equals 5. This, same situation. When is this line going to have, at th this equation at x equals 3 has a tangent slope parallel to the line connecting these two points? Try to do this yourself first. See if you know where to start. You have to be able to know where to start and then start doing stuff. If you're trying to memorize, I do this when I see this, you're not understanding things. I'm gonna use the slope formula to find the slope of this. Uh, let's use eight first. Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. This is 12 halves, which is six. Okay, parallel lines equal slopes. This equation, at x equals 3, has a tangent slope that equals 6. That means the tangent slope generator, when I plug in 3, better give me a tangent slope that equals 6. Okay, now we work. Find the tangent slope generator. 2bx minus 2. 
plug in three, six B minus two. That has to equal six. Add two, divide by six. That's an eight. Four thirds. This equation, f of x equals four thirds x squared minus two x. At x equals three, has a tangent slope that equals six. You want to check? Let's check. Take the derivative of this equation. I get 8 thirds x minus 2 at x equals 3 is 8 minus 2. That equals 6. Boom. Booyah. Same thing. This equation has a tangent line at x equals 1 that is parallel to this equation. What's the value of c? All right, well, we got to find the slope of this. It's not nice. Subtract the 6x. Divide by the negative 3. I don't really care about this because I realize that the slope is 2. Okay? Subtract the 6x, divide by the negative 3. I get the slope of 2. All right. This equation at x equals 1 has a slope of 2. That means this equation's tangent slope generator, when I plug in 1, better give me a slope of 2. Let's find the tangent slope generator. 4cx cubed minus 1. Plug in 1, 4c minus 1, that needs to equal 2. Add 1, divide by 4, 3 fourths. You can check if you wanted to. All right, last page we talk about functions that are differentiable, that are piecewise. Okay, these are different types of questions, but involves the same thing that we talked about with continuity. And now a new concept of being differentiable. For a function to be differentiable, you need to be continuous. And you need to have uh, smooth slopes. Or no sharp points. So, what must be checked to determine if the function is differentiable? We need to check, do they meet up? at least for piecewise functions, or a jump. If there's a jump, we can't take the derivative. Second thing we need to check is, are there no sharp points? If there are no sharp points, that means the tangent slopes are going to be approaching the same value. So we need to check to make sure like our two little pieces produce the same y value. And our two little pieces derivatives produce the same slope values. Yeah. Okay, so two things we have to check, not just meet up, but meet up with nice slopes. So here we go. These two pieces need to meet up at two. Let's denote this as f little one, f little two. Does f little one at two give us the same y coordinate as f of little 2 at 2. 2 squared, does that equal 4 times 2 minus 4? 4 equals 8 minus 4. Check. So they're continuous, this, this piecewise function. But now, are their slopes going to be meeting up as well? Does f little 1's prime tangent slope generator generate the same tangent slope as f little 2's tangent slope generator? So I have to take the derivative. I get 2x. And the derivative of this is just 4. If I plug in 2, I get 4 equals 4. Boom. These two pieces meet up, and they meet up in such a way that it's nice and smoothly connected. So, yes, this is differentiable. Next one. Does this little guy meet up with this little guy? Again, we're looking at 2. It's not always 2. Sometimes it's 1. Sometimes it's 3. All right. Does the function meet up? Is it continuous? 8 equals 24 minus 4. Yeah, no. No. 8 doesn't equal 20. I'm done. A lot of people might check, you know, the second part first, and they might take the derivatives. Like, watch what happens if I check the derivatives. I get 3x squared equals 12. 
If I plug in two into three X squared, I get 12 equals 12. And you're like, oh yeah, it's differentiable. But no, 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 this, this piecewise function is not differentiable because it's not continuous. This piecewise function has a jump. You can't have a tangent slope if you have a discontinuity. Okay. Now we're wondering if they meet up at one where we leave one and pick up the other and if their slopes are nice and smooth. Does f of one of one give us the same value of f little two at one? One plus one equals two plus two. No, no, two equals four. It's not continuous. Done. I don't even care about the tangent slopes. The tangent slopes are going to be the same, but since we don't meet up, we're not good. I hope we have an example where like we do meet up, but it's a sharp point. <laughs> I made this homework, so like I hope I, I knew what I was doing. All right. I hope you guys know what you're doing and not just copying stuff down. Nine plus one is 10. Okay. All right. Mr. Mester's looking good here. Six plus four is 10. We are continuous. Check. Do we have nicely connected, smooth, continuous uh, when we connect? Do we connect smoothly or will we have a sharp point? Will the slopes at three give us the same value? Okay, tangent slope generator of this is 2x. Don't forget to plug in three. Tangent slope generator of this is two. You can't plug in three, you just get two. Yay, six equals two, no. This is not differentiable. They connect, but not smoothly. Woo. All right, now the next part is like, make sure the function connects smoothly. It's the same setup, only now we're just gonna have to set up equations to solve. <coughs> we gotta ensure continuity. So plugging in two, I get two A plus five, that better equal 12 plus B. All right, well, I don't know what A is, I don't know what B is. But the th second thing I have to check is, will there be sharp points? So this is the continuity check, and this is the no sharp points check. Will the tangent slopes of each little piece at two, they need to equal? Will they equal? Now we need to say they need to equal. So we take the derivative now, and it's important to know that A and B are just numbers. They're not, they're not uh, variables. So if I said, what's the derivative of like 5x? You'd say, oh, it's just 5. That's why the derivative of ax is just a. On the right side, what's the derivative of 3x squared? It's 6x. What's the derivative of b? Well, b is a number. Its derivative is not 1. Number like 5, the derivative of 5 is 0. So this is 6x plus 0. So these are the tangent slope generators. They need to generate the same tangent slope at 2. I get a is 12. Fantastic, once I get A is 12, I can find B. 29 equals 12 plus B. 17 equals B. All right. All right, let's ensure continuity. Does the first little piece at one meet up with the second little piece at one? A plus B, three. Okay. Do they meet up nicely, smoothly? Does the derivative of the first piece at one give us the same as the derivative of the second piece at one? Do the tangent slopes give us the same value? They need to give us the same value. All right, well, the derivative of ax squared is 2ax. The derivative of bx is b. The derivative of three is not three. The derivative of three is zero. Don't forget to plug in one for x, two a plus b equals zero. Two equations, two unknowns, solve the system. Uh, I'm gonna solve for b, because it's just by itself, I don't have to distribute anything. b equals three minus a, substitute that in for b. Two a plus three minus a equals zero. a plus three equals zero. a equals negative three. 
plug that in here. B equals 3 minus negative 3. B equals 6. Okay, two more. First piece, second piece. Will they connect? Will they be continuous? First piece at negative 1 needs to meet up with the second piece at negative 1. I get A minus 3 equals B. That's going to be a negative 2 when I plug in negative 1. So this will be B plus 2. Will there not be any sharp points? I need to make sure they connect smoothly. First little piece prime, negative 1, needs to equal second little piece is prime and negative 1. Their tangent slopes need to be the same. First little piece's derivative is 2ax minus 0. I won't forget to plug in negative 1 for x. Second little piece's derivative is just negative 2. I don't plug in negative 1. There's no x's left. So this is negative 2a equals negative 2. a has got to be equal to 1. If a is 1, b's got to be negative 4. Last one. Oh, it's a cosine. Oh, I'm so worried about things. Nope. Just just follow follow what follow the structure. Continue uh, differentiable means you're continuous and no sharp points. All right, I plug in zero. I get b equals the five cosine of zero. Okay, b is five. That's easy. The derivative of whoa 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 going too fast here. No, no, this is right. If I'm plugging in zero, this is zero. B, the cosine of zero is one, five. Okay, good. Second thing I need to make sure is that there's no sharp points. I need their tangent slope generators to generate the team tangent slope. The derivative of the first guy is A. The derivative of the second guy is negative five sine X. Don't forget to plug in zero. Well, the sine of zero is zero. I got it. Listen, guys, there's a lot of stuff that we learned here, okay? What's the key? You got to be able to find the tangent slope generator. You have to practice the power rule. If you can't find the tangent slope generator easily, you're not going to be able to get any of these problems right. So that's the first thing, okay? The second thing is understanding what you have when you find a derivative. The derivative is the tangent slope generating function for the original equation. When we first looked at derivatives, we sketched f prime based on f. We used x cubed as an example. And we saw if we sketch the tangent slopes of x cubed, you get this parabola equation. And we said if you could find the equation of that parabola, you plug in an x, the y coordinates are the tangent slopes to the x cubed function. Okay? So, now it's easy to find that equation. We found the equation for x cubed minus 2 was 3x squared. I can find it like that now. But what can you do with that? Well, you can plug in x's into f prime, and you'll get the tangent slopes. Like you plugged in 2 into 3x squared, you get 12. That's the tangent slope to x cubed minus 2 at x equals 2. You want to find the exact point? Okay, well, you got to plug in 2 into x cubed minus 2. You get 6. So at the point 2, 6 of x cubed minus 2, the tangent slope is 12. Okay, great. What else can you do? You can use your tangent slope generator to see when it generates certain slopes. You can take your tangent slope generator, set it equal to numbers. You can set it equal to other tangent slope generators to see like for which X values am I going to generate certain tangent slopes? Equations can be used. Tangent slope generator, equals 6. 3x squared equals 6. Divide by 3, square root, plus or minus root 2. Okay, that means x cubed minus 2 has a tangent slope of 6 at the x coordinate of root 2, whatever its y coordinate is, and the x coordinate of negative root 2, whatever its y coordinate. Okay, you got to be able to do that because these problems that we did all, all on this page, all on this page, if you're just copying down what I'm doing, you have no idea what's going on. But if you're trying these and you understand what you have, you should be able to get the setup and then execute. But if you're copying, you're going to struggle on the next quiz and the next quiz and the next quiz and the next quiz. <coughs> 
final thing is just to know that to be differentiable, you need to be continuous. You can't have a sharp point. The way we check and make sure you understand differentiability is using piecewise functions. Make sure that when you connect your two pieces of a piecewise function, that you don't connect in a sharp way. Make sure you connect in a smooth way, and that makes a piecewise function differential. Okay? Uh, good luck on everything. Try to do it yourself.